So we, we just put a, an issue of Prostopedia on new drugs in prostate cancer. Uh, and since that's the heart of what I do for my patients, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, issues we've done to date. Uh, and we were fortunate to have uh, three real leaders in the field uh, comment uh, on their work and on the field in general. Uh, and the issue is just full of insights because uh, my daughter was, during the interview, able to get these people to talk in an expansive fashion about where the field is or where it's going to go. Uh, and as many of you know, uh, I have uh, been fascinated for many years about the fact that some men with metastatic prostate cancer enter complete remission. And of those that enter complete remission, some of them are durable. And years pass and the cancer doesn't come back. Uh, so I call that a durable, uh, complete remission. Uh, and so I'd like to expand on, on that. Of the interviewees, uh, the one that uh, touches most closely on what I'm going to talk about is the one by Nick Vogelzang. Uh, and uh, it's appropriate that uh, there's a, a link between what I'm saying and what uh, he mentioned in his talk. Usually, I'm the old guy in the room, but uh, I started to work on prostate cancer in 1987, and Nick Vogelsang started in the early 1980s, and he was already an international figure in prostate cancer research when I presented my first clinical trial with prostate cancer. Uh, and after I gave my talk, he came up to me in, in a constructive way and said, you really don't know much about prostate cancer, you should <laughs> fix that. Uh, and uh, I took it to heart and it was very helpful. And over the years, he and I have had discussions that have educated me. And so much of what I think about has been influenced by my conversations and publications by Nick Vogelsang. Uh, it, you would uh, do well to do a literature search and read what he writes because uh, it's all pure gold. Uh, so uh, I was asked uh, to present my thoughts on the path to durable complete remission uh, at the International Prostate Cancer Update, a meeting in Vail run by David Crawford. Uh, and it was in the middle of January. Uh, and David was kind enough to invite me to give the keynote talk. So a more detailed exploration of what I'm talking about today is available to you because they've recorded the, the video of that talk and put it on the internet. You go to Grand Rounds in Urology. And when you get to the site, go under Men's Health and scroll down and you'll see Path to Durable Complete Remission, what we know and what we need to know. Uh, and now this is a talk given to a professional audience, uh, so technical terms are used, uh, but it's the most complete uh, account I have given in a public forum of my thoughts on complete remission. Uh, by way of background, complete remissions, durable complete remissions are obtained in other cancers. Uh, they almost always require drug combinations. We need at least two to four drugs that work in different ways, each of which is effective in order to get an effective combination. Uh, and so I talk about the first part of the talk uh, how to select those agents. Now, this approach has led to durable complete remission, essentially cure of Hodgkin's disease, uh, childhood lymphoblastic leukemia, uh, gestational choriocarcinoma, uh, cancer of the testicle, um, multiple lymphomas. Uh, and so it's very clear there are cancers that 
are susceptible to this approach. Uh, unfortunately, uh, to date, uh, this approach hasn't worked for prostate cancer. Uh, and so in the talk, I analyze uh, what has been different about prostate cancer. But I think one of the problems is that we didn't have drugs that were powerful enough and worked by different enough mechanisms of action. Uh, and what I like about Nick Vogelsang's interview uh, as he goes into great detail, the properties of the different agents we have and how they can be used uh, in combination or in quick sequence. Uh, and you can tell from the interview he's had a great depth of experience clinically in addition to being involved in clinical trials. And both those areas of expertise come together. Um, for example, now we have uh, hormonal therapy agents that work by very different mechanisms. We've got Lupron versus Firmagon. Uh, for drugs, oral drugs, to block the action of the testosterone receptor, we have old drugs like Casodex, and we have new drugs like Extandi uh, and Zytiga. Uh, and Extandi uh, is 500 times more powerful at doing what Casodex does, and in addition, does several other things as well. Uh, and so it represents a market improvement in the fundamental idea behind Casodex. We have Zytiga, which blocks the conversion of cholesterol to testosterone, uh, and so that is a different way for the cancer to get a fix. We've got uh, Sofigo, radium-223, that kills by radiation. Uh, and that's, of course, entirely independent uh, of uh, hormonal therapy. We have the BRCA-1-2 drug, the Limparza, uh, that I've talked about uh, several videos ago, which appears to represent a real breakthrough uh, in treating patients post-chemotherapy. Uh, and Limparza doesn't require, actually doesn't matter whether testosterone's up or down. Uh, this mechanism is entirely independent of, of hormonal therapy, uh, and uh, its side effects are very different uh, than uh, th that of hormonal therapy, uh, for the most part, uh, or Zofigo. Uh, so, big differences. Um, now, when you're combining drugs, uh, they can add it, be added it. Each drug acts independently, and you can just sum the tumor kill between the two. Uh, or they can get in the way of each other, and the tumor kill is less than you'd expect from combining the two. Um, but sometimes you get synergy. Uh, and the best way to talk about synergy is it's equivalent to 2 plus 2 equals 6. You get much more of a tumor kill than you would have expected. Uh, and we have now, for the first time, what I think is clear synergy in prostate cancer combination. Uh, and that uh, was shown in, the steps in the, both the Stampede uh, and the Charted trial for Lupron uh, and Taxotere in combination. Uh, and the combination uh, is clearly much more effective than either drug alone or what you would have reasonably expected to see from combining two drugs. Uh, so it's an exciting time. You get the feeling that we have the tools to make a major difference. We just need to learn how to put them together. Do we combine them? Do we give them in rapid sequence? Uh, you know, stripes are nice and plaids are nice, but you don't wear stripes and plaids together. Uh, you could have two drugs that look great and might make a great combination in theory. When you do it, disaster ensues because of unexpected side effects. So all these things need to be done uh, in, in clinical trial. The net result uh, is that, however, even at this primitive stage, I'm seeing complete remissions in bone metastatic prostate cancer with a frequency that I'd never seen before. So watch the video, read the Prostopedia issue, uh, and I think you'll quickly get up to speed on, on where the field is now in terms of taking all these drugs and putting them together in ways that are synergistic 
uh, and will put more patients in durable complete remission. Hope you enjoy.